Hello, this is Thomas Dalbert from Onuma Inc. There are various processes how AEs can get a project from SEPS into BIM. With SEPS to BIM, we have automated the process to avoid data loss and to simplify the workflow for the AEs. Each firm will have its own preferences for how to work with the often large number of spaces and equipment in BIM. In the SEPS to BIM guide that is available online, we have shown one method to develop the architectural and equipment models. It can be found in the tools section of the sepstobim.org website. Towards the bottom, there are various libraries that can be used in conjunction uh, with other BIM applications. At the very bottom, there is a link to the step-by-step -step guide for seps to bim and Revit. Some of the challenges when working in Revit with large number of equipment is the potential of, to misplace equipment, to distort rooms and to slow down navigation in the model due to processors and graphic card limitations. In the seps to bim guide mentioned before, we used file linking for the architectural and the equipment planes. That method removes the problem of the large number of equipment, but it doesn't give us a clue about the room contents while doing blocking and stacking. In addition, designing first layouts with rooms in Revit can be challenging because of the inherent instabilities of rooms with room separation lines. As can be seen in the separate video on sepstobim.org, Brian Sickles from Sherlock, Smith and Adams has shown one method to avoid the problems of working with rooms and larger number of equipment by grouping the spaces and hiding the equipment to facilitate the workflow. Another method is to use the SEPS to BIM space type modules as I will demonstrate in the following video. These modules are single Revit families representing complete room codes with their equipment as visual clues for the designers. We are using the same small project that we used for the seven steps in the SEPS to BIM guide to demonstrate this process. To be able to make use of this process, you will need to download the Revit families of the space type modules for your version of Revit and add them to the same library where the Onuma plugin is installed and where the MIL standard 1691 library was played. We export the BIM XML file for Revit with all the individual components But in this case, we also export a special version of the file by selecting the option to export the space type modules. This second file is what will be used for blocking and stacking in Revit. We can import the BIM XML file into Revit with the Onuma plugin. The process is obviously a lot faster than with all the equipment since each space consists of a single 2D Revit family. We show this in 3D here as well. These are single families that can be dragged around. Once imported, we can move the modules away from the rooms to be able to use them for blocking and stacking. In the downloaded folder with the module families, there is also a tag that was configured to display the space information from SEPS in these families. I loaded this tag called space type module tag into this file. We now have the essential information for those spaces, including functional area name, department name, program area, and space code. In addition, I color-coded the rooms with a color scheme and added filters to color code the modules with the same color. In this case, I used it to color code the functional area, but in a larger project, it might be used to color code the departments to facilitate the layout of the floor plan. Since the rooms are single objects, I can arrange them by dragging around the families without the danger of distorting the rooms or losing any equipment, but still with the visual hint of the content of the space. After I arrange them the way I want it, I can add walls and move the space type modules out of the way. 
I then moved the rooms into the appropriate spaces. You now have the bases that can be used for the architecture model. We can now switch to the detailed equipment plan to place those components in the appropriate spaces. In a second import, I get the, the BIM XML file that contains the individual components. We can now move the equipment into the rooms of the linked architectural file. In this file, the equipment components are individual objects with all the data uh, coming in from uh, SEPs. The equ equipment planning file becomes part of the final project. As we see in the schedules, we get all the relevant data from SEPs, including the GUIDs, This last part of the equipment planning, as well as instructions for installing the plugin into libraries, can be reviewed in more detail in the seven steps of the SEPS to BIM guide that I pointed at earlier. I hope this presentation helps. Thank you and goodbye.